So oh, let's so again, we'll see how they're used. But smokes. Four, second, I need that so, just might M4, that just might push op four to assault through open fields, and you just you uh, don't want to see that. Can you, uh, sorry, uh, uh, Arthur, can you drag uh, Hisham to Delta One Combat Engineer of uh, oh, which team was he on? Op four. All right, op four, right. please, please. Op four. Sure. Do you need uh? No, I don't. Right, I will be back, back again. Okay. In one second. No <laughs> remedic or a uh, noxman. Wait for the round to begin. It's okay. All right. Copy. Yeah. Uh, all four is ready. Before we move on, can Fantastic. someone from Alpha One and Independent that is not in the 29th move to Alpha Two? Thank you. Yep. That's. Who just pings me about where Hisham needs to go? There's no room in Alpha 2. Some oh, cool. it's fine. If you're an independent, just come yeah, down uh, to I'll the Delta joining, teams. Uh, roof. I'm currently joining the third roof. Can you put me in It'll Delta Combat Engineer? Eventually. Eventually. If space, uh, Eventually. Da, 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 da. He, I, I believe so. When you join back in, there should be space for you to join up. Okay, so we've got both okay, of our platoon leaders, both of our teams are sorted. Let's go forward to our second briefing for round two. All right, so let's see how this mission file is structured. And, of course, I get a DM for something to add to the multi. That was a good game first round. That was uh, an amazing clutch victory there at the end. Um, that really did shift both ways each time there towards... Uh, where that was going to go, so well done everyone. That was uh, nice to see the balance working well, especially with these numbers. Please do be going to the EU feedback channel to uh, give us all your feedback you can. As Open as fields, oh no. What you like, didn't like, things you enjoyed, didn't enjoy, and just your general stories of what happened, as it all helps us to make this game a better event for all of you. All right, I'm not seeing any red on these sectors, so that usually means uh, they can be taken Open in any order. Fields. Are we returning to the rice paddy, Zarko? He's not kidding mm. about the open fields right here. I mean, that's a lot okay. of open. Uh, Dingo, I'm pretty sure this is Roche, yes. Germany, not the rice paddies. Uh, the sausage oh, fields. It's a sausage fields. Like the sausage fields, y'all. Yeah. Racist. Right. <laughs> the leather hills and forests. All right, so break, break. Is Zarko, is this another one of yours, my friend? Yeah, sector control. You have to clear out uh, all independent before you can cap it. Any questions? Op for platoon lead, any questions? Property. All right, we're going to change to some more lively music. This we're going to play Bentusi battle. Oh, good, because I can't get into the server for some reason. Say sector control on. Uh, Ruha. 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 Interesting map. He's not kidding about the open fields, though. Uh, there's oh, not a lot of room for Op for to maneuver. The only place with any decent amount of cover to be able to maneuver up to is Sector 3, but by the time they get there, that'll be interesting. I, I would love to see just where they, uh, if we might see a vehicle rush somewhere just on an avenue straight, that will give them cover. Straight down that main road. <laughs> as fast as you can go. I mean, not even kidding, down, <laughs> uh... <laughs> not joking. The, the MSR of the yeah. AO that goes to the left, or just, you know, cut it left, hug the border of the map. Oh god, and it's foggy. Oh yeah, that made that MSR push will work for sure. <laughs> Oh, uh, they just gotta get across the river somewhere. Which they can. Well, I mean, looking at the route I'm thinking, uh, if they were to go... to the right... uh, like, way right here, and then just, you know, push through with vehicles, they could get all the way down to the forested area and then ride that forest up to Sector 2, and that would get their foot in the door. And then, like, even then, there's a bunch of open fields, so we might see a lot more vehicle use than, uh, than normal. So I'd love to see that. I wasn't paying too much of attention. Uh, I didn't notice Green 4 gets three BRDMs. I thought they had one. Oh, we're gonna do Beast Battle instead. I'm feeling so, it for this map. Yeah, three BRDMs and, uh, three Dishcoms as well. 
basically one for each AO, op 4 they got those three BTR 80s, plenty of those smoke rounds for those mortars. Uh, I mean, they could definitely pull some faint maneuvers with those mortars, I'll be curious to see how that goes, but I mean, I love that they have these big transport trucks too, because to me this is just screaming to use those to maneuver into positions of cover, because again, if they push through the open field, sure they got the fog going for them, but even then, uh, the fog is only apparent when it's distant, because, you know, close by within a few hundred meters, it's still pretty even. Uh, if anything, the fog kind of helps conceal what's in that tree line, giving the defenders an even bigger advantage. So I'm I'm liking the map balance here, but Op4 is going to have to get really creative with how they push up to uh, get this AO done. Another obvious choice would be the riverbed. But... That river, out of curiosity, All it's right. not that deep. Uh, you can no joke, you can they could drive yeah. BTRs all the way down the river and it wouldn't go into amphib mode. Mm -hmm. Now, I wouldn't suggest that, but I, I would honestly suggest for Op 4 if they wanted to take the most direct route, they should take the riverbed and then they've got a lot of buildings on the left just before the uh first sector they come across mm -hmm. to uh spread their units out and go, but. I mean, with two platoons and Op4 having 60 units, I would consider a force split here. Just because you know that Green4 is going to do a force split. Uh, and that would keep it evened out. Because um, usually nowadays, with this sheer amount of people, uh, when they don't force split, and they just have everyone kind of in a large tactical blob, uh, the other team gets a few guys behind their line and is able to get a shit ton of kills. Uh, it becomes a slot. Yeah, well, not just a, it's, it's a slaughter. But I'll be curious to see how the BTRs are fielded, how the mortars used, uh, if Op4 tries any wide flanks with the transport VIX. I would definitely recommend that. I mean, another thing I could see is they could uh, put VIX on the train tracks and ride the middle ground of those train tracks all the way down. Uh, there's a few rocks in the way they could go around. Uh, but then just before they get near Sector 1, uh, there is a part that they can break off to the left. And then again, just keep going on that wide flank and then deploy right next to Sector 3. Uh, so there are ways to completely get around these open fields. It's just will those uh, methods be utilized is the big question. I'd say take the tracks down. It's risky, but as long as you have people loaded inside, like the BTR. Yeah. Like now, if I was make it to both sides of Sector One and Two and attack it from both sides. Yeah. If I was Green Four with the BRDMs, I would put one on those train tracks. I'd put one doing a defensive check around Takala, uh, the one town to the north, which I'm not even going to try to pronounce. Ojakala whatever the frickety frack, and then that SSR that goes off to the western edge and just kind of lock down that angle, and then the third BTR I would probably just have uh, going in between the two, because uh, I wouldn't expect Op4 to do anything else uh, super wide, so as long as you can use those BRDMs to do recon uh, and find where Op4 is going to make their push, then Green4 can redeploy as needed. Uh, when I see three sectors, I usually like to only defend two. The first one I would defend would probably be sector one, because just there's so much there, you know? I mean, sure, it, uh, it has the riverbed going. Actually, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off on which ones I choose, but sector one's got a good amount of defenses here. It's got the big, uh, structure, which you can get on the rafters and look yeah, around on. Up there, yeah. Yep. Um, there's, there's a few places to put some fortifications down, but there's already a pre-existing checkpoint which can be utilized. Uh, and they've also got some random fuel trucks in here. That's kind of cool. Uh, Sector 2 has, uh, ooh, one of those big, uh, buildings you can get on top of. It's got some rafters next to it as well. And, uh, it's also got a little bit of defense position. Looks like it's a, um... Like a uh, repair facility of some sort, but you know those uh, there can be some fortifications put on these big drums as well, and it's it's not, it doesn't have that many um, covered places to go up on except from the southwest, and then hey, sector three. I found a another fifty U.S. dollars. Oh, in sector my three looks amazing. This massive maze of structures here. 
Uh, it does have a few different routes that can be taken to get on top of it, but if I, if I was in Green Force shoes, I'd put a big garrison at Sector 3, a moderate garrison at Sector 2, uh, and then a small garrison at Sector 1 just for recon, uh, taking there, my things back. There appears to be an ammo cache stockpile of some sort all over Sector 3. Yeah, but that's, I think that's just for ambience. It uh, doesn't actually have any additional ammo, but I do like how they themed this uh, mm -hmm. with Triple R. So, Sector 1's Refuel, Sector 2's Repair, and Sector 3's Rearm. You see the little Easter egg there? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm corny like that. Yeah, One of you talk about something. You are. <laughs> Shut up. Well, I, I want to be proud about something. The server, so I might be out for this round. That's well, okay, I'm, Barb. I'm just taking a look around. Like Anyway, Larry, the thank you for the group. additional uh, $50, like man. Stop spending it on me. Spend it on yourself, yellow. okay? It was your and, birthday. Uh, Go buy yourself something nice. You don't have to keep dudes. putting it on me, it's man. You've, you've done more than enough already helping me with the last college payment, all right? Put my fingers in a heart for you. But enjoy yourself first, man, please. In the BTRs. But thank you, I seriously. T5, no, T5 thank you. Not a BTR crewman. Uh, these are one life uh, per round. So, yes, uh, there is one they do once in a while, which is multi life, which they forego like the second and third rounds and just have a massive round two, which has reinsert waves. But uh, we've only seen one of those in the past two and a half months. Yeah, like men play, exactly. So, when they die, they Everyone get into a similar spectator mode that uh, I have. Have now, played in FNF? I have not. Barbarian, I'm not sure has either, but he just went to uh, away. I, I would just suggest giving it a try once if you haven't seen their interface system and the way that you... Oh, I, I've seen it. They have it in oh. the, um, the, the, you know, the, uh, before the first round begins, they have the server up just to oh, okay. well, so do that one. like Orbats and all that stuff. Yeah, it's, it's cool how they have everything set up. But uh, I, I like to follow the rule of coaches don't play until I'll be able to use TSB to snag a command position. It's just so... the two times in the past I've tried, I meet like I want to step up and then I immediately think to CCO seven and I immediately shut up because <laughs> that was that was scarring. Well, there might be room tonight if you feel like playing. Yeah, we'll see. But uh, probably not because CCO eight is tomorrow, and I don't want to spook myself. Oh, wait, you're doing that again? I'm not in a command position. Okay. I'm never, never doing that again. <laughs> never. That was, fun, that was a fun video to watch. That was six hours of... D did you enjoy me crying in the beginning because of the stream sniper? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I bet a lot of people that want to see me fail enjoyed that. No, that Yay. such bullshit. I hope they got banned. <laughs> Now, anyway, back to the operation. Uh, the Dishka is, I would put one on the bridge just to overwatch the uh, the river entrance. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd probably keep one Dishka to one sector uh, and just put them to overwatch open fields or obvious routes of travel. But really, if I was Green 4, I would just divide, uh, let's say Green 4 is about 50 guys. That's what I saw on the roster, at least. Um, oh, yes. Oh, please be doing it. I'd put about 25 to 30 in Sector 3 in a round. I'd put about... Andrew, what? I need you to go look at the refueling truck next to Gestel. And take a nice good look at They're it. putting bombs on it, aren't they? They're putting bombs on it. Yes! <laughs> That's what I... Oh, that is such a cheeky position, too. <laughs> I love it. Spot. They have it literally, like, dangling off uh, something in the freaking axle there. I love it. Now, realistically, fuel trucks, uh, there was an ACE update about a year ago, which, they don't um, they don't do a big explosion. Uh, if you really want to cause a lot of damage, you have to find a full ammo truck, mm -hmm. and that will fuck things up. But a fuel truck, um, really just makes a lot of fire and smoke, but I really like the, uh, the idea, you know, the spirit of that, yeah, oh yeah. so. It'll make for an entertaining one. Mm-hmm. It seems to me like, I mean, we still got plenty of time before they move out, but honestly, I would sacrifice Sector 1. I'd put yep. a light garrison force, sacrifice it, and just dig in hard at 2. Exactly. Three. Yep. That's that's my thoughts exactly, because there's too many ways that yeah. Op 4 can advantageously move to Sector... And we just lost uh, two vehicles. Uh, nope, a BRDM and a transport truck before the... Uh, 
Start. It doesn't appear anyone has died, but uh, yeah, they can't. They can't die until safe start ends. But, but green wow, is down, a BRDM they they already transport. armored something. That's amazing. That's the first time I've actually seen anyone officially armor vehicles and get them killed. And I've seen it one other time, but wow, that's uh, they're not gonna get those refunded. So oh. GG. That's why you don't uh, play bumper cars. I am very curious to see what Red 4 does with their borders, though. Uh, I know oh, they have too. smoke, but do they also have HG Nailed is the question. It. No, it's only smoke. It's had smoke only, only in the uh, Orbat, but I guess we'll see that change maybe. But they got like two boxes of smoke rounds each for the uh, mortar. Um, I, I cannot believe Green 4 just did that. Uh, the only other time I've seen uh, that level of mistake uh, was... Uh, an MI-24 with a full squad of dudes pancaked on a Serrani op. Yeah. yeah. They crashed into the mountainside. I mean, thankfully, this one doesn't seem as catastrophic because there's two other BTRs and there's another transport truck that they can use to move around, but... Wow, you know, like, I, I think they're gonna have to have uh, one or two vehicles come back to ferry the rest of these guys, but... On the bright side, op is not gonna know about this, so they can't adjust their plans for fighting less enemy assets. They gotta continue as planned, but... That's gotta suck for Green for to already lose that. I don't... I don't even know. Like, it looks like it got T-boned or something, and then just armored, so... I don't know. Don't don't play bumper cards, kids. It uh it costs people's uh vehicles and lives. You have real physics and then you have Arma physics. So we have Scandi Recon plus a BRDM over here in sector two for Green Four and one of Platoon HQ. Yep. So that BRDM is in the location we were discussing. That's a good to go uh, scout out that stuff perhaps. Uh, yeah. Sector one. Not quite sure what their game plan is. I, I think they're doing exactly what we talked about. They're setting up a few ambushes uh, with explosives at Sector 1 to give it as a gimme. We're seeing some guys on foot from spawn moving to Sector 2, so they're going to make that into a light garrison, but they have a massive garrison forming at Sector 3. What I'd love to see Green 4 do in addition, though, is take five to six dudes to make a maneuver team to try to find Op 4's major force coming in and um, hit them from the rear and just try to do some significant uh, casual work because that can honestly make or break op force push here so we'll see how that goes we still have a dishka out in a safe start here that hasn't been utilized i'd like to see them move that and it looks like op four is uh we've got excuse me independent we have stray dog again with the marksman rifle with dingo a combo we saw last stop and they did some good licks uh, while they were blue four fighting op four but I think they're going to now try to find a different position here to engage. Something we do have to make note of, though, they planted a bunch of, and when I say they here, I mean independent, planted some of those explosive charges on these vehicles, but if they only have clackers, they got to stay close by to actually demo those, so... It's got a decent enough range for them to push a little bit out, but... Yeah. It's, it's about 200 to 300 meters pending terrain. And I'm pretty sure they didn't give them the good, uh, what is it, the 152 class? Yeah, they're not going to give the 152, um, that's the one where you have to hit the two buttons because it's like a box where the clacker is just the, the squeeze. Yep. Anyway, we have Op4 loading up a few guys. Looks like it's uh, the Alpha 1 squad, uh, fire team, excuse me, loaded up in a gas. Uh, we have the rest of Alpha also loading up in a second gas. Uh, we still have a lot of infantry kind of doing briefing and whatnot. The three BTRs are ready to go. One of the BTRs is fully mounted with, uh, looks like Foxtrot, so, uh, the second weapon team. And the other BTR has a few guys in it as well. It's impossible to tell, but it looks like they're mounted with, uh, Platoon HQ, uh, and elements of command as well. Uh, mission has just started. We're already seeing Alpha deploying with those gases. I'm thinking maybe the rest of uh, Op 4 infantry are going to deploy in the trucks. Uh, but again, I'm really going to be curious to see how um, Op 4 deploys their units. If we're going to see any sneaky flank attacks or if they're just going to go down Main Street. Also, are the mortars still out or did they get loaded into something? Looks like mortars are like still, still at there. base. Yep. Uh, they have Elias staying back. Uh, you gotta remember, for, uh, Friday Night Fights, they don't get artillery computers. Uh, so, he's, uh, he has an LR, though. I think he's just gonna get them manually ranged with people in the field. But, 
the further they are, the more that spread's gonna be, but because it's only smoke, they might just spam it to uh, make those false arcs, so we'll see how things go. Go ahead, those Ice. Two, those two gazes are hauling down the road, and, uh, nope, they've turned off. There was, a uh, I uh, like that. For an independent squad that was in the middle of that tree line, but they've broken apart where Drake is. Yep. Now they've just split apart. I don't exactly, I didn't, I wasn't paying attention to where they went. It appears no one is actually headed towards Sector 1 at this time, and most of independent is maybe just sitting at base. So, Op 4, they're pushing two BTRs on the right flank. I'm willing to bet they're going to do the train run route. Independent has sent a BRDM on the left flank, watching for a far left flank, which I, you know, said I would cover with the B, uh, a BRDM. But, Op 4, they've got in uh, their Alpha squad up uh, just down Main Street. I think they're going to get in this little forest area and just have a look around, try to get some eyes on Sector 1, potentially. And, I mean, just with Green 4 here, looks like they're trying to sneak their Marksman and Dingo over on the right flank to watch for that angle. But, no, the BTR is going to go down the SSR instead, uh, just directly to Sector 1, which is going to work out for him because uh, Green 4 is pretty much making defensive lines on Sector 2 and Sector 3 and just fanning out from there. Let's so, just hope they don't pull too close to those fuel trucks. Yeah, but I mean, independent, they still need to get guys in range, and I don't I don't see the EOD guys even close to that position, you know? I would have at least left one person in Sector 1 to tell them, to, to tell them when to detonate it. At least. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're going to they rely are, on when people step in. The issue with this, though, they are well is... They well out of range of those, of those charges. Well, let's assume they had infinite range, all right? Just for the sake of argument. The issue here is how these sectors work is Op4 cannot take these sectors so long as there is one one independent guy alive, not in an unconscious animation, but physically alive in the sector. So if Op4 goes to the edge of this sector and just touches it, let's say they touch it from the road, those yep. explosions from those fuel trucks, since they're in the center of the AO, it's not going to do anything. What I would have done is I would have been the explosive guy. I would have waited by the fuel trucks and I would have just clacked it off as soon as an entire, like a few guys came up around me, you know? Suicide bombing is not something they allow, though, so who knows? I would have definitely left, left someone in the tree line, in one of the buildings, up in the rafters, just anywhere. Yeah, then, then you just put the them... in the sector to where it forces them to have to go and clear it. Yeah, I mean, the, um... Like you were the, saying. The southern, the south e uh, southwestern tree line uh, behind the SSR, uh, that's connected to the bridge, there's a lot of little bumps right here. They could put a dude in a bush. And you can just wait. Op 4's uh, dismounted their BTRs already. And we have Stray Dog and Dingo are in a perfect location to check anything coming down. Uh, any, uh, anything on the eastern side of the Yeah, that's smart. That's very smart. It's just Op 4 are picking the obvious routes to go down, and Green 4 didn't put anything to check those. So Green 4 is still going to get bamboozled here. But uh, with Op4 of doing... One BRDM definitely hit them. I feel yeah. like that would have been in the center somewhere. I mean, because uh, right now for Green4, they got one doing recon and one on defense down the train tracks, which is smart. Uh, I think they got it in reserve in case they spot like a lone transport truck coming down the train tracks and then send the BRDM up to swack it. But Op4 doing some really early dismounts. That's going to eat up the clock a little bit, but... I mean, just based off where the sectors are, where Op4 has divided its troops, uh, they do have the spare time. We're just not going to see much action for, I believe, the next five minutes, give or take, as Op4 maneuvers in. And again, since Green Force ditched Sector 1, uh, I just... I don't see anything going on. Maybe the left recon BRDM might run into the BTR uh, pushing with this truck convoy, but I really do like how we're seeing those trucks being uh, mobilized. Also, we're seeing uh, some guys picking up possibly one of the mortars here. I mean, they could just load up the backpacks in those uh, boxes of smoke rounds in that remaining truck and drive around, but I don't know. Yeah, I have nothing to do with
I'm just gonna. Early dismounts of Red Four over there, though. I, I get why they're doing it. They're trying to play it cautious because they got no recon data on where Green Four is going. Usually, with this amount of people, we see some sort of counterattack from the defensive faction go off early. So I think um, it's not Severe that's commanding, but it's one of his guys. I think he's yeah. being cautioned to, hey, you know, play it safe because Severe has played a lot of uh, Friday Night Fights, so he does know a lot of what happens, and he knowing his command style tends to play it a little more cautiously uh and more often than not that does better for him but in this case where uh green four realizing that you know sector one's kind of a death trap they've deployed further back and again that's just gonna let op four eat up the clock here but at the very least it means the tail end of this op is gonna have some really intense combat uh for the remaining areas so it is worth noting all of Alpha was able Another to push dismount. all the way to their current location without getting spotted. Yep. Or engaged. So they know it's... In theory, Red Forward know it's reasonably safe to at least get near them within 500 meters or so. Like the next tree line to their north. Well, if anything, that explains why they, they dismounted they early, though. Isn't there. True, but if anything, that explains why they dismounted early, because if yep. they know that that central area is clear, then where's green for if exactly. they're not in the center? So I, I get the early dismounts. We see the mortar uh, being crewed on the rear. Stray Dog and Dingo spotted, had to have spotted some of uh, Foxtrot over here, uh, because they are sprinting across the tracks through the open, which I think Defensor might have spotted them. And they're trying to reposition to get, I guess, more intel. Or just eyes on in general. Yeah, so a lot of TSB guys right here, they got their binos out looking right at this flank. Uh, I don't think either side spotted each other. I think it's just Stray Dog and Dingo flanking around thinking they've uh, been into that spot. Oh, no, Dingo definitely has Dingo eyes on. <laughs> yep. Now, the only downside for Dingo, though, is that blue mask. It'll, it'll get... The yeah, that's unfortunate. Literally, we'll give you a cover. We'll give you away. Like his camo's perfect, but that big N95 mask on his face could potentially uh, do him in for. Uh, I thought Iota spotted them, but he's looking a little to the right. But Deventer the thing is, straight at them. <laughs> okay, yeah, no. So both sides spot has each other spotted. The issue though is, um, we got Risen kill with it? them heavy uh, with the uh, PKP. So he's got a nice red dot on. He's trying to set it up uh, in that direction, but Stray Dog does have that marksman rifle, and he could get a few free kills here. Uh, and then Dingo and Stray could just pull back, and uh, you know those free kills is exactly what you want to be in, especially in the situation where uh, you are fighting the faction with uh, you know more numbers than you. But the BTRs are starting to pull up, uh, one on each flank here, and that's gonna make it a little harder for Stray to get those spare shots, and furthermore, again, Dingo with that blue mask can be easily spotted by those BTRs, so... Gotta be careful. Now, funny enough, I am seeing, uh, on the left BTR crewed by Joe, uh, his commander's turned out with a, uh, Vector 21 looking around, so... That could be That's a free kill. Yep. But the issue is Stray Dog again with that marksman rifle. He could get a snipe on that BTR and uh, get an easy free kill there. But otherwise, not much other contact has been made. As Op4 being incredibly cautious, moving up to. Uh... Here we go. The river assault is happening. Yep. I was going to say where. Um... Uh, the rest of the force is kind of just trying to fall in line with Blue 4 here. Uh, not Blue 4, excuse me, Alpha here. Uh, Alpha sending two guys back potentially to grab the vehicles. Uh, might try to push deeper, but they just don't know that the next tree line over, they have where, things set. Where did Alpha leave their vehicles? I was not following them at the time. I thought they pushed... Uh... By the way, uh, Twig King with Drake, Drake being the other marksman, he's looking right at the tree line Op 4 is in. I don't think they have him spotted yet, but... The marksmen are both in really good positions. You got Stray Dog and Dingo trying to reposition to find where that Op 4 push is happening. But yeah, Op 4 getting in the lowlands here to move up Riverside, as I figured they would, because it's, it's the most obvious uh, ingress route with concealment to these open fields out. 
When you have an AO with a shit ton of open fields, it's safe to predict that your hostile force isn't gonna use them, but always set up a machine gun there just in case. Oh, Stray Dog is channeling his inner Scandi Recon, hiding inside of a tree. Of course he is. Dingo is trying to spot where everyone went, but it should be fairly obvious if they aren't in that tree line anymore. There's only one place they can go to advance without being spotted. Hey, by the way, if the BRDM were to look front, it'd actually spot the Gaz's Alpha dismounted, but I think the fog is helping to conceal them because Alpha just recruit their Gaz's and are driving them away. They are within sightline if they just look straight ahead. The BRDM yeah, but, is looking the exact opposite I know, but direction. the BRDM, they're focusing on that uh, wide left that flank wide that flank, I predicted. Yeah. So, obviously, again... It, it, this is one of those interesting scenarios where the defense is too smart for the offense. And they're thinking the offense are going to do these uh, grandiose schemes, whereas Op4 is just like, haha, let's just go down mid and rush B. Some, rush B. <laughs> sometimes the simplest plans in life are the uh, most effective, and uh, it shows. Uh, Pierce's BRDM advancing on the right flank with a full squad on it. They are doing... ND, Independent, is now doing a hard right flank. Oh yeah, no, they've called for reinforcements. Uh, this is that counterattack I was talking about that you might see Independent push, because right now Green 4 has seen these two BTRs. They're going to see them move to the riverbed, so that's going to give away to Green 4 where this attack is coming in. And if Green 4 can get dismounts in some defensive positions, we could see a really nice attack done by green four but that window's closing as op four is moving into the first ao we also have sholin that's pulled back into ao number one hiding in the bushes i'm willing to bet he has the uh the clicker for the uh bombs yep yep i'm willing to bet that as well <clears throat> so he's pulled into the ao this will also prevent he does uh have sight lines and where both of them are placed as well Yep, but he is in a bush. Like I said, that's the one position he wants to be. It's also really difficult for him to be spotted because of his camo working uh, with that green, uh, the shrubbery there, I'm going to call it. Uh, but, I mean, it's just going to take a little more time here. Meanwhile, BRDM doing a wide right flank. Not sure if the BTR crewed by Ode is going to see anything. Actually, they have the gun pointing way up. I don't know why they're looking up, but... If they lowered that gun, they would have seen the BRDM bush by. <laughs> so lucky break there by Green 4, but ah, uh, aye, aye, aye. I am willing to bet. Yep. Uh, the trench, do you see the death laid uh, direct to the, what is this, east of the BTR? Just by the road right there? Yep. They're going to dismount and push down that and try and take out that BTR, which is now... Yeah, they, they do have the RPG-32, and I'm willing to bet Sanders has his assistance, nope, so that's going to give him six shots. But yep, the BTR is starting to push ahead. I wouldn't say the chance has been lost just yet. Op4 is taking its time, but if they if uh, Independent were to move up this little riverbed here with concealment, uh, they could get behind the BTRs. Uh, right where the BTR is, there's another riverbed right here. Uh, that could at least put him in the position of the other BTR, but now uh, we're going to have to rely on Independent trying to find the balance between Caution and Mobility. Uh, Sanders trying to line up a shot, realizing he missed it, but he is now sprinting for it, uh, even though it is a little bit risky. I think they're banking on the fact that Op4 is pushed all the way up. If Op4 had some rear security, this would be a different story, but... I think Independent could easily get a few free kills on these BTRs. We see Dingo and Stray Dog coming around. They got to keep low, though, because uh, the BTRs have definitely deployed some infantry. We got some members of TSB in here. They are manning the machine gun teams. For... Yep. And the BTR is watching this forested area, so Dingo's got to be really careful when he moves up here. Uh, meanwhile... It's good. Uh, we'll not be able to swing left to hit Dingo, though. Yeah. Uh, road's in the way. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. People don't think about that though. They don't think about the little blind spot that the um, the BRDM has on the uh, the little light. But I don't think the 80s have that issue. Uh, usually, it's the 60s and 70s. Uh, that little strobe light on the top right. That was a pro move. Uh, Johannesson just gave Standers his binoculars to try and uh, make sure he can make the shot. I think he might try and wedge that shot between. Oh, what do we have here? He needs to move closer though. Ode is hopped out of 
the BTR. Standards has a... Nope, Dingo has a shot. By the uh, way, T5 Bay... Real quick, T5 Bay, Dooley, and Logan uh, checking the forests that Alpha for Op4 was in. Uh, if they look right, they might be able to spot the gases uh, and some movement Shots in the uh, tree line. Code just knocked out Dingo. I, I told you if he moved up that vector, he was going to get spotted, and I believe that was a kill. Because yep, I don't see his body. It yep. was a headshot right behind the building. Yeah, you do not want to be on the front of that 14.5 millimeter. It is the biggest caliber of bullet you usually see in Friday uh, Night Fights. With an AK. Wow, even yeah, better. Even I better. Kind of wish I had what that a recorded. Chad. That was a really good shot. Dang, I missed it. Oh well, but Stander is now running up behind. BTR might try to reposition, but if it pulls back like this, it's going to make itself oh. an easier target for Stander's. Come on, Stander's. Come on, Stander's, get that RPG out. Stander's has a perfect shot here. Fuck. And misses! Oh no! BTR doesn't BTR know doesn't that it was just oh, engaged. No, it's, and it's there's it's the it's kill. It's BRDM pushing around with seven guys on the back. Will the other BTR swing its gun around though? I don't think it's realized that his buddy's been injured. Seen some dismounts. Oh my god. Hold up, BTR might have just noticed. Now they're firing back and forth. But BTR is trying to be mobile instead. Uh, we also see Rec uh, getting out. Another good player uh, managed to knock out Ipu. This puts my boys in a... Uh... Pinch. Victor just got shot by something. Send in Severe, I don't think notices that there's a mass amount of combat going on his left flank. Now he's hearing that heavy caliber. Yep, uh, that usually doesn't mean everyone's dead, but it does look like uh, the driver. Nope, the driver just got knocked too. So yeah, everyone in that BTR is dead. Independent could potentially steal a BTR now. That would be devastating. And now you're seeing uh, some movement in the Op4 line over here. Sholin pushing up on his own. He's the demo guy, though. At least I thought he was. So this is and a little risky. Across the map, the other BRDM just encountered the rest of the Reds' main force and is doing their best to line him up and gets hit by an RPG. Is it She's still going, him? though. That was a direct hit to the turret as well. Turret's still active though from the looks of things. Dodging another RPG shot, that's really well done. So what is happening here? So now the BRDM is running down uh, up for Prozzi. Prozzi is right next to him. Oh. Defense Ooh, is gonna another walk knockout. Into him. Nope, Devencer probably spotted his legs. Yeah. Come on, Devencer, you see him. You have to see him. He did not. He did not. He's getting tunnel visioned on the rock. Mm-hmm. BRDM's pulled back. Looks like it's doing a little bit of repair. We still have the op for, excuse me, green for BRDM moving around. Sholin might actually get away with this, and that's that's funny as hell. I will, I will be f happy if he does. By the way, uh, Op4 is using AK-74, and Sholin looks like he's using an AKM. Prozzi coming right up to this guy's bush. Come on, Prozzi, look to your left. He's gonna literally back look up into no! him. No, Prozzi, turn. <laughs> T oh, the old God. guard. Wait, Prozzi! No! 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 <laughs> you. F <sighs> like right, I said, if I were to him, bet between TSB and Scandi Recon. See, TSB made the same mistake last week in Winter Wonderland, mm -hmm. uh, last third round of EU. The only reason they spotted the enemy t uh, two guys in rocks was because Audrey Hado spotted them. Like, Audrey Howard, the guy that got 21 kills we in a single round. A chance, though. Platoon HQ is coming up now. Sholin could potentially uh, snipe them, though. I think he's just getting recon data for what's over here. Looking over on the other side, not that much is going on. We see some um, T5 here, Bay uh, with Dooley and Logan that, looking around back to uh, Op4's for force. Uh, they're still trying to repair here. the BRDM, but Alpha's turned here, around looking for them right now. Past him. Shoot him! Thank you! Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to get heated, but that was no. upsetting me. No, don't be. I mean, Severe, you gotta remember, though, he's a really good PvP oh, guy. Good. So, 
Sholin, I think, jumped the gun there, saw the long range radio and figured that was the leader. That's probably who it was waiting for, was uh, someone in leadership to swing by. Uh, just with less people, though. So, um, yeah, he was trying to catch one or two out of position, but unfortunately so lost that someone fight. Someone is driving the BTR around, but... Oh! Here goes a body Tactical flip. Body That's out. because uh, I think Tor uh, Torodi was in the Vic and just disconnected. Uh, Sholand also disconnects there, waiting for the next round. Uh, but yeah, they're, I think the, whoever's in there is going to solo crew that. But Standers might get uh, another RPG out and just finish it. No, I think I think they're going to come and pick up Standers and the other guy and use that BTR. Oh, you're right. I think the... Um, yeah, the camo in there is uh, Woodland. So yeah, they, okay. that's the stolen BTR. That, that is a stolen BTR. Amazing. I think this is the first time I've seen a vehicle successfully stolen. I've seen that, it one uh, other time, but... Like a heavy at, well, all right, uh, one of the heavy yeah. assets. No, definitely. So, um... My question is, where are they going to drive them, though? We have Platoon HQ of, uh... Green pushing up into Alpha's position now. They yeah. all know that they are there. All of Alpha is converging on Hippie. Drake, I guess, trying to find a good dismount spot. He's with Twig Kane. Drake and being one of the marksmen. Out. Grenade thrown! Right on the car, takes out its wheels for any sort of escape. Drake getting mowed down by a machine gun. He's still alive, though. Hippie pushing up, catches Twig out of position. There goes there Independent goes Platoon. Uh, not even platoon, you're right, command. And Drake gets hit a few more times with a machine gun. Now I'd like to see one of these op four guys steal Crap, no one ever the, marksman the marksman rifle. Rifles. They they uh, they I should. We I see people do it from time to time and it always helps. If I can get my hand if I'm a rifle and I can get my hands on on a machine gun, yeah. Take it. Independent BRDM on the left flank, meanwhile, got cooked off. Uh Mountain Beam medic up by legs, because legs is a medic, so he should be able to save him. But now, Independent should be getting a good idea of where Op4 is coming up on. And for some reason, Red is stalling on their push into Sector 1. They just and gave I've... Stanners uh, a copy of the crewman uh, earmuffs, and they're going to make him uh, drive around. Uh, well, actually, no, gun with uh, someone else in the BRDM. Oh, they just they pulled out an Op4 body and just executed him. <laughs> There now it's green because it was uh, it was now, red on my roster for a while because there was an unconscious guy in it. Right. So I was wondering what was with that. Yeah. It looks like they're all just gonna swap to it. And honestly speaking, they could probably use that to get pretty close to one of the other sectors because they might not know that that BTR is enemy if they at least ride inside of it. Yeah, not outside. outside cause that would give it away. I would keep both Vicks, uh, cause you know two 14.5 millimeters is gonna be a very dangerous weapon. Uh, especially when there is so few avenues for Op4 to advance on. But I would say so far, even though uh, Green4 just had their commander decapitated, uh, just because they have the extra BRDM, or excuse me, BTR now, uh, limiting Op4 to just one, while um, Green4 has their one BRDM and have stolen a BTR, they, they have a little bit of an advantage here. But let's, uh, let's check Skulls on the left side roster here. So we have Twig, Drake... Dingo, only three KIA. Mountain just woke back up from legs. Where on Op4, we got Dead Joe, uh, Peju, Patriots, and actually that's it. So, no, never mind. The body count's pretty even, but the amount of vehicle losses have been more on um, Green4 side, uh, only because, or excuse me, Op4 side, because Green4 was able to commandeer that BTR, but otherwise it would be even because, oh, again, no. they lost a. Uh, what? Uh, Green 4 is headed north with those vehicles, possibly to try and find the mortar position, which was never moved out of their spawn. No, I'm willing to bet they're going to, um, try to go behind the Op 4 flank on the left like you called out, and, and uh, try to go behind them. Fuel vehicles being deaded, just Yeah, like but again, said. it's useless because... See, this would have been beautiful if they forced independent, uh, Op 4 in here more, yep. but unfortunately, it, it didn't work. No kills. So again, to the people that will watch this video back. Yeah, no, definitely. They are really good spread on these explosions. They took out like the entire central line of the sector. But honestly, what they needed to do is just wait in that bush, let them come in and then do that explosive trap. And that would have been so much more effective.
but unfortunately it was a little bit of a squander. So if we look over on the left, I'm gonna the scroll down the names, and if you see a 15th MU, feel free to call it out. Who knows where they're trying to go? And then I saw they that 100 bits uh, greetings from Australia. Cooked off the RDM. We just had another but explosion in the sector. There's no one looking. But I know there's the a direction. few people playing uh, from the 15th MU and uh, EU, uh, but normally they play no NA, is which is another uh, few hours of, from now. Uh, there we go. Now we got some. People. Anyway, scrolling up, uh, Nat, thank you so much for the 100 bits. Normally you don't catch Twitch because of the time difference, I feel that, but hello from Australia. Or hello from America to and Australia. BTR I've been to Australia, it's pretty nice. The field straight towards Logan and T5. Hey, Scandi Recon on Independent, they're attacking an Op 4 position. Uh, it's Op 4's forward position on the left flank. Also, some Independent guys might catch that BTR out of position. Flying Finn just gets a kill. Uh, Infidel stopping 2600k from running around. Missing his shots. Nope, there we go. Oh, headshot. Yep. Uh, Finn died, though. With that machine gun. Finn died? Oh. Don't know from where, though. I think he got hit by a grenade. Nemesis flanking around, doing some suppression. I think he took a little bit of a hit there. Doing a quick... I Nope, thought it was reloading. Blood. Infidel now pushing up. Doing a reload, checking that window. Nemesis going down. What hit him? Infidel knocking out Glenn, pulling back. Small pushing around, but catches Infidel. Wow. Nemesis a back, uh, back up. Crawling behind, might try to do some medical here. Also, uh, BTR80, I think, spotted some of these green four guys and is trying to shoot them. Might catch T5 Bay out the. Yeah, T5 Bay is in trouble. None of them have AT. Yeah. And Op 4, those two vehicles are still, uh, excuse me, independent, uh, Green 4, I'm s independent or Green 4, same thing. There they, um, go. yeah, there goes T5. Open. Yep, uh, that was 14.5, that pushed in, hit him in the legs. But, um, Green 4 still has those two vehicles, the Commandeer one, the BRDM, out of, uh, out of position on the northern side. Nemesis, meanwhile, bandaging up, uh, staying prone in the back. So what are these... What is the captured vehicle? I, I don't know what they're doing, doing back there. I think they're just waiting in reserve. Stray Dog, meanwhile, pushing to the northern side of where Sector 1 was, trying to get some eyes on the Op 4 force coming down. And uh, we got Kaja in the back here getting shot at by Op 4. I wonder if Nemesis might just try to wait for them to come over this open field so we can shoot them. But I think Misu just saw Nemesis. Nemesis managing to hit Oscar. Uh, and unfortunately... The Chad gets gunned down. It was a good try, though. Definitely. Uh, we have other people, uh, another fire team. Dental Dope pulling out an RPG! Hitting high! Uh, fragmentation getting a few licks in, but nothing, uh, too major there. Immediately getting return fire on. But now we're starting to see the skirmishes of this operation unfold, but... Op 4 does not have a lot of time left. Uh, Sector 2 they could seem rolling, but Sector 3... They, they could make it in the, the 20 minutes that are remaining, but if uh, Op 4 keeps getting slowed down, time will start becoming an issue here. Oh, Op 4 has some beautiful dug trenches here for their, uh, one of their PKPs to bipod on. Suppressing to the left. I think they're misidentifying where Green 4's position is, but it's at least putting some fire over there to make Green 4 think about it. Uh, I highly doubt Nemesis is going to wake back up, but... We have Misu in the open. I'm hoping Kaja pokes out and uh, hits him. There's the shots. Oh, this is perfect because he's picking them up. Come on, Kaja. Come on, Kaja. This is perfect. Two for one special on Op 4. Take it. Kaja! I think he's trying to line up a GL shot. Possibly. But he has a smoke round loaded in it. It's all right. Shooting smoke at him to freak him out. Sounds about right. And they all missed him. That, that so was Stray Dog, by the way, is right behind Op 4. Uh, they're loading up in some gases. Uh, but I think, um, yeah, they're going to load up in the gases just drive down the riverbed. So Stray, instead, he's now pulling north, unfortunately. Uh, and the BTR has pushed by. Logan's still back here uh, riding the riverbed, waiting to stop. Uh, no, he's still crawling by, uh, down it. And then we have Dooley uh, walking down as well 
I think this was the B, uh, BRDM crew that um, got blown up in the beginning to Arma, so now they're just back capping. So I'd love to see Dooley get behind this one off four position and again try to get some uh, rear hits uh, just as Scandi Recon tried to do, but ended up uh, pretty much breaking even. We've got the one remaining red BTR headed towards where, well, they might see each other. We might they... see some vehicle warfare in a second, but. Op4 and, definitely has the advantage on, or sorry, Independent has the advantage for the vehicles now. Yep. So if they do... No, but if that, um, if that Op4 BTR catches... Oh, no, you're right, they did just dismount, because that, uh, that BRDM had a bunch of guys in the back. That would have been easy pickings. But honestly, that BTR needs to pull up to kind of assist this Op4 flank coming around. Also, Dooley is dead. Uh, looks like, uh, part of Op4 Charlie... I see them looking back where Dooley was. Yep, here's his body. Uh... Dooley unfortunately lost the 360 security fight. That's unfortunate. And still, oh, there we go. Now the mortar. Oh shit! Look at Sector Two. Those gases wow. were from the um, from the riverbed. They just pushed in with vehicles. That's exactly what I wanted to see this round. And now green is, if you look, green is completely falling back from... Oh yeah, uh, they're going to scramble now to Sector 3. That was a delay in action because they knew Op 4 had this major force here, so they were just trying to stall it. They weren't expecting Op 4 to break off from the riverbed force, push those mm -hmm. gases around and take Sector 2. So and now... They, go ahead. They've they've completely remounted all of those uh, vehicles and are... looks uh, If they were smart, they are going to hard push to Sector 3, but they have to be a little careful about it because they could run straight into... Uh, Foxtrot and Platoon for, uh, One of the big yeah. issues, though, is look at the river and look how it's getting deeper towards Sector 3, so they might not be able to pull a vehicle around it. Well, we also have Killer Potato got a, got a light, and uh, they spot don't right have a there, machine though. gun over there. They have a bunch of, like... Cyan, yes, thanks for the eight-month right resub. Good spot. evening for you, they too. Are in the clear open. Hope you keep They're enjoying the operations. And I hope you they get a kick out of this. And, uh, Jonathan. They Seriously, man, stay are. safe. Um, 73, I don't think they right really there, do vehicle they, stuff. I am still remaking, uh, 73 down. Eastings for my group, though. That'll be seen later, maybe, so. What's up? Hiccups, too. Ah. Grenade round going out towards... And they landed short. By the way, uh, those two green four Vicks, it looks like they're going down the uh, SSR and they're gonna try to just push to Sector 3 here. Gazes are being rushed in. Uh, Ballot here has one drive right in front of me, just stares at it, going, wait a second. But if he were to turn around, he could shoot out Hippies, because Hippies has his door, his door open. open. Ballot! Come on, Ballot! Ballot! Just notice those are bad guys, dude! So Op4 literally pushing in. <laughs> Green4 now Jumping engaging. Wait a, wait a minute. Those are bad guys. I'm gonna laugh my ass off. Oh my God, Actually, that was amazing. I'm not even going to laugh. Op 4 has a shit ton of dudes right here, and yeah. a lot of Green Forge guys are still completely out of position. Those vehicles are still way a ways away. This, this could be a devastating rush, but I didn't call this out at the beginning. If Op 4 just vehicle rushes, they could win. And here we are, seeing the vehicle rush. Buck and Robertson getting in a 1v1 right here. Sky no decisive up winner. Oh, he's got, he got caught reloading! And the Sky Online uh, knocking him out there. That is not what you want to see Green 4 doing right now, though. So Green 4, they, uh, the forces that are outside the sector are now focusing on the riverbed force coming in. Those vehicles also still coming on, but they're a ways away. Green 4 needs to just be hauling ass back. Wow. They just... Green 4 committed too many guys to counterattacks when they needed to keep uh, more guys on defensive hurdles here. Hudson trying to get a shot on Vito, but Vito just bitch slapped him with that PKM. There's the 15 minutes remaining marker. I thought Op 4 was going to lose this on time, but Op 4 immediately changed tactics with those gazes and literally blitzcrag these last areas. And that that is really making ways here. Uh, let's see, Green 4 down to two defenders now. Op 4 still has a lot of guys on uh, push here. We have some of Alpha 2 coming in. Uh, but Green 4, with that, uh, with the vehicles, they've got about a squad worth of guys. Uh, let's see. 
it would be three so five extra dudes to dismount keeping guys in the driver and gunner seats of those vix that could help turn the tide up for not sure if they uh have any at to uh deal with this uh situation they need to hurry up up uh, four needs to hurry up and start clearing this quicker well, if they, they, they they're doing their best though this is a really big ao which is why i recommended green four have a lot more guys in defense but now olaf and op and grums from that alpha uh detachment are going to come in here uh, and the vehicle's pushing in, but Op4 on the riverbed winning that fight. Uh, they're going to be able to get reinforcements out. Yeah, I don't see a single Op4 guy with AT. Uh, Hunt Hippie does have Grenadier rounds. But if they if they take Standards out and take his AT stick, though, they could take out both of those BRDMs. Meanwhile, Op4, what they need to consider is mounting dudes in that BTR and just shuttling a lot of guys out. Uh, looks like uh, Jaxa is down with a truck, but he's getting target fixated on Logan harassing him. Uh, Jaxa, uh, Jaska really needs to get down there, get his guys mounted, and focus on the objective, not the hostiles here. Because uh, the longer he waits, the uh, more go. time it's going to take for them to re uh, get Straight here. On. And... Straight yep. on getting rounds into the back of. Uh, yep, I'm seeing that. Them. Spear is down. They got the. Uh... Yep, Stray Dog doing a really good job picking the guy in charge. These guys are none the wiser. Logan, by the way, who stalled that truck is now uh, getting disconnected, but I think he's okay. Uh, we're seeing a lot of intense PvP on Sector 3. More Green 4 guys They're that pushed the in, though. Wow. They did push into because the Green 4 didn't get into the sector itself. God damn. So unfortunately, see, and Grums wakes back up, though, but if they're all knocked unconscious, then it counts it. Wow, oh wow, that. Green 4, yep, they dismounted too early. Oh, wow. What a blitzkrieg there. That was a crazy round. I, I love the vehicle tactics that were switched on. That, that made it very, very well done. Now we've got plenty of time for round three. All right, let's get back up there.